Hello, Franklin teachers. My name is Justin Miller, and I'm going to go over how to make a screencast and post it on YouTube 101. What you see below is a screenshot of a screencast that I actually created a couple of weeks ago, and it was an essay for the students. Now, the purpose of this screencast wasn't to show the students how to actually write the essay, but it was to show them how to really structure it. What should go in paragraph one? What should go in paragraph two? What should go in paragraph three? And how they should support it. What I've run into, and I don't know if any of you have come into a similar situation, a lot of times when you give the directions to a task for a student, they feel like they understand what to do while they have you there. Then it comes time to do the assignment and they forget. So creating these videos are a nice way to give students a little bit of support uh, so that you can actually come into their living room when they're doing an assignment and you don't have to actually be in their living room. So if you scroll down a little bit, uh, you can see the view count when it was published, January 18th, 2015. So I have 130 students, and right before when this was created originally, you know, I had had like 10 views, and I started to wonder, are they going to actually use this? And it's about a week before the assignment, and it had 40 views, and I thought, this is great, they're using it. Then all of a sudden, two days before the assignment is due, the views went out of control. I get a notice in an email from YouTube, you've just hit 100 views. So like typical middle schoolers, they procrastinated till the end. They didn't quite remember what they were supposed to do, but they didn't have to send me an email and ask me, or they didn't have to ask for an extension, or worse yet, do the project wrong, because they were able to access this video and it supported them. So if you scroll down a little further, here are the steps. Step one, you got to create a YouTube account. You can just create any Google account. My recommendation would be that you create an account that is a teacher account just for your students and that they're the only ones that are going to see these videos because these are videos that are for your students. The software I recommend that you download is Screencast-O-Matic. It's very user friendly. It doesn't cost anything as long as you don't mind that little Screencast-O-Matic water logo that you see on the bottom left corner of this screen and it gives you up to 15 minutes. So you download Screencast-O-Matic, you're gonna Google Screencast-O-Matic. I like finding the one that says CJNet because I've just found that that's worked or CNET. It, it's worked the best for me in terms of not having to worry about downloading viruses. So if you look at this when you're done downloading it it will have this Screencast-O-Matic lo logo. You drag it to your applications, and then it will appear in amongst your applications when you go into your launch pad. Here it is again. You can download it. It's CNET.com, and you click Download Now. You'll come into your top right corner under your downloads. If you're in Safari, you double click on it, and then you'll get something that looks like this. You drag it into your applications. Then if you're looking for it, all you have to do is go into your launch pad and look what you got. Screencast-O-Matic right there. You double click on it and then the program runs. So once you've done that, you've downloaded your Screencast-O-Matic, this is how easy it is. You're going to have a little screen capture. I recommend you go to full size and high definition. And then you have an option if you want to see the little face like you're seeing for me right now you can click this and turn on the face FaceTime uh, HD camera if not you don't have to have that camera there you can just have a regular screencast um, then all you have to do is click this little red button there'll be a little counter it goes three two one once it counts down all of a sudden you've got your screencast you're just as simple as that you start recording when you're done, step four, after you've got your recording, is you preview it and then you upload it to YouTube. This is a little bit complicated, not really. The preview is just as simple as clicking play. I put a test for demo, and that's what I saved this file as. Now, it gives you an option to publish it directly to YouTube. I don't recommend you do this. There's some question it says where they want access to your YouTube account. And I'm not personally comfortable with giving a third party access to a YouTube account. It's probably just for advertising or something, but I'm just not comfortable doing that because we are creating this for students. So I always publish the video to a file. You select that, and what you'll get is this screen. Uh, it will say, what do you want to save it as? 
You save it as a QuickTime MP4. Here on the, the picture, I put full size, but I always like to do high definition. Gives them a little bit better quality. So here's your high definition size, test for demo. And you scroll down, it tells you how you can save it. I saved it as test for demo. And now I can open it in iMovie. So you go back into your, your launch pad. You go to iMovie. But when iMovie loads up, all you have to do is click now import. It's going to give you an option to import from uh, your desktop. I'm going to click JS Miller. It's the little house under the desktop. Just in case it's not visible, I'll scroll over that little. Then you just click into documents because that's where I saved it. You just then have to find the file. And it gives you the ones that you can open. These are other videos that I've created before. And we're looking for the one that says test for demo. So once you find the document that you want to import, the test for demo, you click here. You got to create your own folder for it. So here's all the folders I have. I have a new event now. And I'm going to create that new event as test for demo. You create that. And this will import your file into this new folder. Once the file is imported, you can then select the clip, and as you select the clip, you can share it. This is how you get it on YouTube. You just click Share, YouTube, you use the email address that you created with your Google account, and you click Next. You just decide whether you want it to be public, and you have the name already because you named it before Test for Demo. You can change the name if you want to add a description, and you click Next. And what this will allow you to do is share the video. All you have to do is click Publish. I'm not going to publish this because I don't really want to publish this video to my YouTube account. But if you click Publish, you wait a few seconds, all of a sudden, or minutes, you'll get a note in your upper right-hand corner of your screen. Your video has been shared successfully or unsuccessfully. If it's successful, you visit. If it's unsuccessful, you just try to do it again and it will share it on YouTube. Then you can visit the site. You can actually look at your video and you can grab the uh, URL and you can post it on your website and share it with students.